What do you need to do to move into your next level of God's call on your life? We glean five simple insights from Elisha's story of his stepping into his next level, going from being an assistant to becoming a leader, from being called to stepping into the call. All right, why don't we all rise up to our feet this morning, make our declaration together. So if you brought your Bible, it's a great... Uh, just hold your Bible high up in the air. If, you don't, if you're using your phone or something, that's okay. But let's say this out loud, bold, and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His Word. I believe His Word. And I live by His Word. Christ is my Master. And to Him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please turn around to the people next to you, friend of you, behind you, shake hands, say hello, give them your name, and uh, then you may be seated, please. Just a couple of testimonies really quick. Um, this one came through our church app, uh, and this is from a lady who had been... Um, having problem in her ears for 14 years. And you remember a couple of Sundays ago, we just prayed very specifically for those people, those conditions. Uh, I don't fully understand the condition, but she had some wetness and pain in her ear, right ear. And uh, after 14 years, she has complete relief now. And so she writes and sends this testimony uh, of what God has done for her. There's another one that came in by email. Uh, this couple, they came forward for prayer one day. Uh, I, I don't know exactly which one, but sometime for the 25th wedding anniversary, they would come for prayer. Uh, and at that time, they received the word of the Lord spoken over them. Uh, they came for prayer for their marriage, but they received a word for their business. And, uh, and of course, you know, uh, at that time, uh, they, the husband was going through challenges in, in, in the business area. But after that word of the Lord was spoken over his life, he's saying so many things happened. And uh, uh, there, was, there, were, there were lots, first of all, there was a lot of jobs coming in, more than what they had. He was scared that he, couldn't be, he wouldn't be able to handle all of the, the jobs that were coming into his business. Uh, but this time, I know he just put his faith in God, he trusted God, and he, he just shares here that, you know, all of those jobs were delivered within deadlines, well, and God has been so good, so gracious in this business. So that's just another testimony that's come in, and are we just thankful to the Lord for what He's doing uh, in the lives of, of His people. This morning, uh, I just want to share a word of encouragement to our hearts. Uh, if you have your Bibles, please, could you be turned together uh, to Second Kings chapter 2. So back in June, I was kind of reading through some of these portions and just meditating on it. So I made some notes uh, in June this year, and then I said, okay, we've got to wait for the right time. We've got to get all the series over first. <laughs> Let's wait for the right time to share this. And so here we are this morning. I'm going to just share a few thoughts here from the life of Elisha. And uh, they call it, titling this sermon, Moving to the Next Level. Moving to the Next Level. And basically, we want to draw some lessons from the life of Elisha on how he actually entered into the call that God had for him. And we will just, you know, we'll, we'll read the passage, we'll draw some lessons. And, uh, and I just want to present this to us, especially as we close out or getting ready to close out a year. In the last month of 2017, December, uh, you know, we'll be thinking about, of course, there's Christmas celebration, all that. But as part of all that, we'll also be thinking ahead about 2018. And uh, the challenge I want to put out to you and me is that 2018, we must move to the next level. Personally, in your life, 
move to the next level. So I just want to draw some lessons here from Elisha's story on, you know, what does it take uh, to move to the next level? But let's read 2 Kings chapter 2. Uh, we'll read verses 1 through 15 first. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And fifteen men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me, when I am taken away from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. And he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him. And went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over. Now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed him, bowed to the ground before him. Let's also please go to 1 Kings chapter 19. And we'll read this short passage here that uh, describes how Elisha was called in to follow Elijah. So we go to 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. And we're going to read verses 15 through 21. First Kings 19, 15 through 21. Then the Lord said to him, go return on, that is to Elijah, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. And you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Sulphat of Abel-Meholah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he, that is Elijah, departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Zephat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. So he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again for what have I done to you? So Elijah turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment 
and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. So I want us to just follow Elisha. Elisha had this very powerful call on his life. So obviously he was a farmer and he was just doing what he, was, he had to do. He, stay, you know, he had this land farming and with his oxen and doing everything. And along comes a prophet, Elijah. Now we don't know the age of these people. It's not given to us in scripture. Uh, and uh, we don't know for exactly how long Elijah had been a prophet in the land. He must have, you know, just, I don't know, maybe 10 years, 20 years. He must have been a prophet, well known. Uh, uh, people knew him as a prophet of the Lord, especially after what happened uh, with the prophets of Baal and the fire coming down and burning up the offering and so on. So here was Elijah, a well known prophet, coming to a farmer, Elisha, throwing his mantle on him. Elisha immediately knew what this meant. Right? It wasn't just some nice thing the prophet is doing. No, he's called me now. He's calling me. This is God's call on my life to be a prophet, to follow this prophet. And so immediately he leaves his family, he leaves his work, and he follows Elijah. And he becomes his servant. Now, we don't know how long this period of time was where Elisha was serving Elijah. You know, we could maybe speculate, and again, this is speculation. We could try to look at the kings and who came and went. Let's say for 20 years, this next 20 years, he was walking with this prophet. He was serving this prophet, but he knew there was a call. I'm going to be a prophet like Elijah. I'm going to step into his shoes. That's what I've been called to. That, 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 that's the significance of him throwing his mantle on me. He didn't put that mantle on anybody else. He put it on me. So there's a call on my life. And what, it is, what is it? It's to step in to this role of a prophet, which right now Elijah is walking in. So how does he go from being called to actually stepping into that call? We want to draw some lessons. And I want to put that challenge out to you and me in our lives as well. All of us or many of us recognize God has a plan, a purpose for our lives. We're not here just for the sake of being here. We're not here by accident. We're not here as purposeless, aimless people. God's got a design. God's got a plan. And He's calling us or He has called us into something. There's a place we've got to go. There's a destination. There's a calling. But how do I get there? How does Elisha transition from being a person called by God to becoming that person and stepping into that call? Five simple insights. Nothing profound here, but very simple and nonetheless very important for us. The first thing we see is that he steps in and he starts serving faithfully. He becomes Elijah's servant. And like I said, we don't know how long, but he just stays there doing that. He serves faithfully. And so here's a very important, simple, but yet a very important principle. Serve faithfully in whatever you've been given to do. You may feel like, you know, I'm called to be a great businessman. I've been called to start a company. I want to be the president of an organization. Or I want to make a, I want to make a certain change in society. I want to, you know... Uh, impact certain kinds of people, whatever. This, each one of us carries a different call, something that really burdens our hearts. But how do you get there? Most of us never will not step into our call the next day. You don't find that in the Bible. You look at people in the Bible like Joseph or Moses or David or Paul. They had their moment of call but it took them a period of time, a time gap, before they actually stepped in to what God had called them to. Paul was called, he had a powerful encounter on the road to Damascus. But it wasn't until 15 or maybe even 17 years later that he was commissioned as an apostle, to go as an apostle. He was called, but there was a time gap. Are you with me? 
What do you do in that time gap? What do you do when you're going from here to there? Serve faithfully, number one. What, has, what, is, what is in your hands right now? What are you doing in your workplace? What are you doing, you know, with what you have? Are you serving faithfully? Are you being faithful in that? And you can just imagine Elijah following Elijah around. He says, man, that mantle looks nice on him. But one day, it's got to come on me. But I've got to stick with him. I've got to stay here. I've got to be faithful. And, you know, as somebody serving the prophet, I don't know what kinds of things uh, uh, Elijah may have required of Elisha. Maybe he was a bookkeeper, keeping all the money. Maybe he was keeping the, his appointment, his schedule. Maybe he was cooking the prophet food. I don't know what all they did those days. But he had to serve faithfully. Are you with me? Whatever you are doing, serve faithfully. Stay with it. The next important thing is in the Second Kings, we go to chapter 2 now, the passage we read, where now it's getting really close to the time of transition. It's become well known to Prophet Elijah, to Elisha, and even all the other prophets. It's time for Elijah to be caught up and taken to heaven. He's going to leave now. Very important. Elisha had to stay on the journey until his moment arrived. So number two, stay on your journey until your moment arrives. There is that moment, there's a transition point when you're going to be, move from what you are doing to into that call, but that until that moment arrives, you've got to stay on your journey. And as we read in 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah himself was willing to let Elisha go because the time had come. So he said, guy, I don't know, I'm just putting it in common language here. He said, Elisha, you've done a great job. You've been around me. I mean, you've done a really good job. Why don't you just check out now? You can relax here. Stay in Gilgal. I feel I need to go. And, you know, they have the schools of the prophets in different cities. So he said, I need to go. I need to go to, you know, Bethel. I need to go on to Jericho. I need to go on to Jordan. Just say bye to all the prophets whom we've been training. So relax. You've done your job. Well done. Thank you so much. Bye. But he said, no. I am going with you as long as you are alive. As God lives and as your soul Meaning, I'm not going to leave you until the very end. I'm staying the journey. I've been called to be alongside you. I've been called to step in. And I'm going to stay with you as long as your soul lives. I'm staying. Stay on your journey. Because that moment arrives. And you don't want to be absent from that when that moment arrives. Same thing, the prophets, they all came. And they told Elisha, Elisha, don't you know your master is going to be taken up from you today? I mean, he's going to go. I mean, it's the end of everything. He said, yeah, I know. But he also knew his call. And he said, I'm going to stay with my master till that very moment, till that very end. So stay your journey until your moment arrives. Number three is this. So, is, is, so don't quit your journey. Just because of distractions, discouragements, or a lack of discipline. Don't quit your journey. There could be things coming your way. Don't quit. Stay your journey until your moment arrives. Number three. Desire and ask, but also pay the price. So you can imagine Elijah carrying in his heart a certain desire. What was that desire? It was a godly desire. It was a good desire. What was it? I want... Twice as much, Elijah's caring. There's nothing wrong to desire things like that. It's a good desire. And you can imagine him carrying that in his heart. He's following Elijah the prophet. And he said, one day, I know I'm called to take on his role, but I want twice as what he's got. I want to do twice as much. I want to, you know, go further, higher, stronger than him. And that's the desire in his heart. And he's following Elijah around, but that's the desire. He's carrying that desire in his heart. That's a good thing. 
It's good to have those desires. It's good to have desire towards the call on your life. What is God's call? You've got to have dreams. You've got to have aspirations. You've got to have desires in aligned, aligned, aligned to that call. And it's good to have those desires. They are godly desires because they're aligned to the call of God on your life. And it's good to ask. So Elisha comes to that moment where Elijah says, ask what I'll give you. He said, okay, I want twice as much. He asked for it. But there was one requirement. And what was that requirement? He said, you know, you asked a very difficult thing, a very hard thing. But if you see me, when I'm taken out, you'll get it. That means you've got to be with me until that very moment. You've got to stay the course. Now imagine if Elisha had gotten off the journey at one of the other cities. Thank you very much, prophet. I hope you enjoyed my serving you. And all the best trip to heaven. <laughs> he would have missed this little bit that was left over. You've got to see me. You've got to stay with me until I am taken up. There's a price to pay. Stage a journey till the very end. So, you know, I think this is where many of us miss it. We desire the right thing. We pray for the right thing. But we don't pay the price for what we're asking for. We don't stay the full length of the journey. Now, somewhere along the way, maybe we get discouraged. Maybe we just give up or we get distracted. We go off on other things. But we don't stay the journey until that moment comes and we pay the full price that is required for what we are seeking and desiring after that double portion. So you'll get it, but you've got to be there at that moment. See me when I'm taken up. I mean, stay the whole course. You'll get it. So desire and ask, but be ready to pay the price. So, you know, what is the next level that you want to go into? In your family, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your workplace, in your career, or for the, you know, those involved in ministry, for those in your ministry, what's the next level that you want to go into? Desire for it, ask for it, but be willing to pay the price for it. Doesn't come free. So I want to be a team leader. Wonderful. I want to be. I want to manage a team. Great. But are you ready to pay the price? You know, it's fancy. It's really nice to think that oh, I'm going to be in charge. But you know, when you're in charge. You're the first in the firing line too. You're the first person to be held responsible. Things go wrong. You're the person who's got to put in the extra hours. Because the rest of the team is watching you. If you slacken, they'll also slack. So you've got to up your game two times. Team leader, welcome. So you want to move to the next level. Hey. There's a price to pay. In every area of life, there's a price. You can desire for it, you can ask for it, but you've got to be willing to pay the price. So what does it take? Now you're willing to pay the price for you to move up to the next level in whatever you've been desiring and asking God for. Number four is this. Prove yourself in the new level you've stepped into. So here you see... As Elijah is caught up, his mantle comes down. And that's exactly what Elijah has been waiting for. That mantle I can wear now. So he picks up the mantle of Elijah. He's got it. He stepped in now to that role of Elijah the prophet. He stepped in now. He's the prophet in the land now. He's got the mantle. But you notice... He doesn't wear the mantle and says, guys, check it out. I got the mantle of Elijah. <laughs> yeah. Look at it, how nice it is. It fits me perfect. He doesn't walk around that way. What does he do? The first thing he does, as he picks up that mantle, as he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? I mean, I got the mantle. But I want to make sure God is with me. If you say you're carrying a mantle, but you can't do the works of the mantle, it's no use. 
got to prove your mantle. So the first thing he does is he takes the mantle, he strikes the water. Let's see if it works in me, with my hands as much as it did with Elijah's hands. If it doesn't do the same things it did when Elijah carried it, no point. He strikes the waters, the waters part. So here's the point. When God brings you into a new level, prove yourself first. I like to put it this way. Let your work go before you and your reward will come after you. Let your work go before you. Your reward will come after you. Most of us, the moment we get our mantles, okay, now where are the perks, you know? Where's the rewards? No. Let your work go before you. Prove your mantle. Prove the new level that God has ushered you into. Let people see the fruit of your work. And they will give you the reward that you deserve. Your rewards will come. Prove your work. Whatever it takes, work at it. Let people see your work. Your reward will come after you. The last thing I want to share here from this passage is to go beyond the previous. Elijah's last was Elijah's first. The last thing that Elijah did, closed off his ministry, was the first thing that Elijah did and he took off from there. A new level means you go beyond the previous. And if you look at these two prophets, I'm sure they may have done a lot more miracles and other things in, in, in terms of... But if you look at what has been recorded, twice as many for Elijah as compared to Elijah. Double portion. So you need to go beyond the previous. So go up in what you're doing. You've stepped into a new level, but take everything up to the new level. For instance, Elijah had to go from being a servant to being the leader prophet. He was no longer serving under somebody. He now had to oversee all the schools of the prophets. Shift in what he was doing, a change in what he was doing. And he had, you, he had to go beyond his previous. The same thing for you and me. At each new level, you and I will have to go beyond the previous. It means there will be a change in what you do, the way you do it, and the price you're paying for it. So some of us say, okay, I want to get into a new level. Okay. Previously, you're waking up at 6. Welcome to a new level. Wake up at 4. Say, God, well, you asked for it. You wanted a new level. Okay, here it is. There's a price to pay. Every new season requires a new you. Say, tell your neighbor. Every new season requires a new you. And tell your neighbor on the other side, if you have somebody there, every new season requires a new you. So if you say, God, take me to a new level. Take me to the next level. Bring me into a new season of my life. God will surely take you there. You pay the price. You stay the course. You stay the journey. You come into it. Hey, but you can't be your old self. Every new season requires a new you. Things will dramatically change. The way you do things and what you do, how you do it. It's a new season. It's a new level. What's demanded of you is different. If you and I, you know, we want to do what we are comfortable with, I always used to do it like this. That's the problem. If you want to go from glory to glory, there's only one way. It's called change. We are changed from glory to glory. And many of us resist change. I don't want change. I liked it 
the way I used to do it. Every new season requires a new you. You've got to go beyond the previous. You can't do what you were doing in the past and expect, you expect to walk in this new level of whatever, grace, anointing, calling, gift. Away. You want to be at a new level, requires a new you. Are you ready for it? So, five simple insights here from Elijah's story of how he goes from being somebody who is called into something so great to becoming that person who steps in to that call and, 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 and entering into what God actually called him. And I'll just quickly review and be close. He served faithfully, stayed on the journey. You stay on the journey until your moment arrives. You desire and ask, but you must also pay the price. Prove yourself in your new level that you've stepped into. And go beyond previous things. The way you were doing things before. The comforts you were accustomed to. Go beyond those things. Be a new you. In the new level God has brought you into. Amen? So... December 2017. In about 12 months, we'll be in December 2018. As you look forward for 2018, I want to challenge you. Would you dare to pray today and say, God, move me into a new level. This time next year, I want to be at a new level. I don't know, professionally, spiritually, family relationships, just so many things that you and I can think about. And say, God, I've got to step things up. I can't just stay here another year. Just my age changes. <laughs> that number keeps on increasing. But my life isn't changing. Whatever I'm doing isn't changing. No. You pray today. God, I want to move up to the next level. We've drawn, a few, we've drawn a few simple insights from Elisha's life, how he moved. You and I can, too. Let's rise to our feet. Let's call our worship team up as we take a few moments just to pray. Before we dismiss... The various ways God may have been speaking to you or has spoken to you or where he wants you to go, what he wants you to become. In Elisha's case, he was called to take the place of Elijah. And God has something for you. This morning, would you say, God, I want to move up one level, move up the next level as I move towards the call. As I move towards what you have in store for my life. Father, I just pray for people this morning here, God, who are here. That you help all of us move into a new level in our lives, in our journey. Move to a new level, God. To move into what you've called us, what you ordained for our lives. Show us those areas where we need to serve faithfully. Give us the grace to stay the journey, God. Help us. Not only to desire now, but to pay the price. Put in that extra effort. To rise up. Help us to prove the new level we step into. Let our works speak for themselves. God, help us to go beyond the previous. Help us to accommodate the changes. Help us to be the new, new us, the new you. Father, I pray professionally the people will move to a new level. 
I release grace. I release anointing. I release the empowering of the Holy Spirit to lift people up professionally, to break off things that have been constraining them, holding them down, pulling them down, whether it's their own personal things, whether it's things imposed on them. In Jesus' name, I break those off and I assure into their lives a movement of the Holy Spirit that will raise them up to a new level professionally. God, in their businesses, for those who are business owners, I release the grace, the anointing of God to cause those businesses to move up to a new level. In reach and in influence, in finances, in profits. Let the Holy Spirit lift them up, Lord. Father, we also speak over the families, the homes, the marriages, the relationships inside the home. We thank you that you're the God who heals, you're the God who restores. But we just don't want relationships that have bandages on. We want relationships that are thriving, that are flourishing, that are abounding with your goodness and mercy and love and, and joy. And so I speak over the relationships inside the home, in the families. And I pray these will move up to a new level, empowered and touched by your Holy Spirit. Let there be a change. That homes will move up to a new level. Relationships and homes move up to a new level. Let there be joy good understanding coming in. God, in our calling, in our ministry, in our impact, on in our influence on those around us, in our winning of souls, in our seeing of the healings and the miracles and the power of God, move us, O oh Lord, to a new level. Help us to be willing to pay the price. Give us the grace to pay the price. Move to a new level, God. Let nothing discourage us. Let nothing distract us. Help us, Lord, to avoid the detours and stay on course on what needs to be done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You take a few moments just to worship God, just engage between you and God right now as the worship team leads us. And pray if you would like to, worship if you would like to. But just engage with God and say, Yes, I want to move to a new level. God, in every area of my life, take me up to a new level.
before we close, I just want to give an invitation for anyone here this morning. You've never, up until this time, you've never received Jesus Christ into your life. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus died for us on the cross. He took upon Him all our sins. He was buried. The third day He rose up again and He's alive today. God's promise is this, that all who believe in Him receive forgiveness for their sins because He paid for us. And He gives us the power to become children of God. He brings us out of darkness into His marvelous light. He makes us brand new creation, brand new on the inside. If there's anyone here this morning you've never had this experience where Jesus Christ has forgiven you your sins, made you a child of God, made you a brand new person. If you've never prayed and asked the Lord to do it for you, I want to give you an opportunity to do it right now before we dismiss. So if you don't mind, if you'd like to do it this morning, just pray this prayer with me. This is to help you experience what Jesus Christ came to give you and me. Just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. Make me a new person. And help me to follow you the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me this morning for the very first time in your life. If you don't mind, could you raise your hand, please? Anybody? I see one right hand, one hand right up there, back there. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, just keep your hand up. Our greeters will come to you, give you a, a bag that has free resources and a card where you can please write your name, hand it back to them. We will get in touch with you. Uh, we'll help you uh, make progress and journey on this, uh, in your journey, make progress in your journey of faith. All right, God bless you. Next Sunday is Children's Church Sunday, all right? So our children are going to be in charge of the entire service. Worship, message, everything. They've, 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 they've got everything ready, okay? So come expecting, uh, invite other people who might like to uh, receive and just benefit or be blessed to the ministry of our children uh, next Sunday. Let's close, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. Lift up his countenance on you and give you his abounding peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good Sunday afternoon and a great week. See you next Sunday. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.